Dear students, today we shall discuss the scientist as an indexical reasoner. Now, uh, this concept of indexical reasoning is essentially drawn from the theory of ethromethodology in sociology. Now, the person who has written this uh, article is in fact not an article, it is part of a book. Uh, I will show you the details of the book and the author as well as the chapter. Here, if you can see in the slide, the chapter is titled Scientist as an Indexical Reasoner, the Contextuality and the Opportunism of Research. The author is Karin D. Nursetina. Now, this is part of her book called The Manufacture of Knowledge, an essay on the constructivist and contextual nature of science, which was published by Oxford, uh, Pegaman Press from Oxford in 1981. Now, what is this indexical reasoning? How is it related to scientific research? How is it related to problem of knowledge production? How is it related to uh, selection of research problems? How is it connected to the things that happen at the laboratory that decide the course of the research? This discussion talks about the micro level of scientific research, how scientific research takes place at a micro level, at a uh, local level. Not, so, when we think about research problems, we think that probably the scientist who is uh, keen to work on a particular research problem may have been influenced or inspired by a great scientist. Hence, the person has decided to embark on a research problem and consequently continue to do his or her research. Let us say, for example, a person, a graduate student of physics may have been very much inspired by Einstein's general theory of relativity and the person wants to do something in that direction. Hence, enrolls for PhD and decides to join a faculty member in a reputed institute, uh, so that he or she can pursue his or her interest in the area of general relativity. But once the person joins, it is quite possible that the person may have to settle down for a research problem depending upon the interest of the supervisor or the thesis guide or the faculty member under which he or she joins. It may depend upon the research expertise as well as the research interest of the, the group of scientists uh, who are working in that department. That is because it is quite possible that the group of scientists uh, along with that particular research uh, uh, students supervisor must have uh, got a grant to work on a particular research aspect in physics. Hence, they want the research scholars to pursue their PhD in that area. Right? It can also happen that uh, the instruments and apparatus which are available at that institute would not be very conducive for the kind of research that any research scholar uh, initially wants to pursue. Hence, the research scholar may have to change his or her research problem depending upon the research apparatus, instruments, machines available in that particular institute. Hence, we are looking at the how this laboratory selection choice of scientific problem is guided by local conditions. This is an article, this is a discussion on the contextual nature of scientific knowledge production and it is based within the theoretical framework of ethnometrology.
See, ethnometrology is essentially concerned with how we human beings make sense of the everyday social interaction. There is a method to our everyday conversation, there is a pattern. Ethnometrologists try to uncover this pattern. For them, context, context plays a very important role in understanding meaning. Meaning of every human interaction is dependent upon the context. If you do not understand the context, the meaning of human interaction is very difficult to interpret. I will give you a very short example. Let us say two persons are conversing with each other. The conversation is like this. So, how was it? The first person says, how was it? The second person says, well, it went well, it went fine. Then the first person asks, what next? The second person replies, well, it depends. In a conversation like this, it is very difficult to understand what is happening, what are these two persons talking about, what are they hinting at, because what is missing here is the context. We do not know the context. Without context, we cannot read meaning into the conversation of these two persons. The two persons can be talking just after writing an examination, college entrance examination. How did it go? It went well. What's next? Depends. Depends upon my result, my performance. It can also mean the two bank robbers talking just after committing a bank robbery. It can also mean two persons, criminals talking after committing a murder. So, unless we know the social context, the meaning to so in human interaction is difficult to interpret and understand. This is the basic idea. We do not uh, go into the details of what is ethnometrology. Ethnometrologists rely upon context and for them meaning is context dependent. Another term that they use <coughs> is indexicality. Now, what is indexicality? Indexicality refers to situational contingency and contextual location of social action. What does it mean? It means that when we make sense of the social world we live in, we try to negotiate, manipulate, understand the social situation we are in by interpreting each other's symbols language, gestures and in ethnometrology, as I told you, context is given primary importance and another term that they use in this regard is indexicality, where they talk about con the, uh, the, the actions are contingent upon situation and uh, the contextual lo location of the social action determines meaningful human interaction. It imparts the contextual, contextual location, it imparts order, harmony to everyday social interaction. So, in this context, in the context of our discussion, just replace the word social with scientific.
what we are concerned with is how the scientific action is dependent upon, is contingent upon the micro level situations, conditions operating, working at research institutes or laboratories or scientific organizations. How those conditions and situations determine the choice of scientific problem, the choice of methodology, the choice of instrumentation, the decision to uh, make use of certain chemicals uh, in the absence of some important chemicals that is required for the research. These are the issues we are going to talk about and Karin Nasatina, the author of this book has done an ethnographic study of biochemical labs in California region of US and based on her ethnographic work of 9 to 10 months, she arrived at this conceptual, uh, uh, arrived at this uh, findings and say put it within the context of conceptual framework of ethnometrology. For her scientific research and laboratory selections depend a lot on the local conditions. Lo laboratory conditions are local, it depends on the context of research as I told you. So, the concrete research situation it determines what scientific problem that we choose, how we go about it, whom do we join as, uh, as our thesis supervisor or our uh, uh, research guide, how we conduct our experiment, what are the instruments that is used, things like that. Scientific research is locally situated operation. Product of scientific research are fabricated, negotiated by particular agents at a particular time and place. It implies, because we are discussing it within this uh, framework of ethnometrology and indexicality, it essentially means that we as scientific researchers have to constantly manipulate, negotiate, bargain maneuver the situation around us in order to successfully conduct our research, to publish our paper, to, to get research proposals, to work on a scientific uh, project. It is a constant process of negotiation, bargaining, manipulation, uh, understanding the situation, uh, working according to the uh, uh, constraints or advantages of the situations. So, it is local rather than universally valid interpretations which has a strong bearing on actual research that is undertaken. Now, <clears throat> I already gave you an example that some person may have been very much inspired by new, uh, Einstein's theory of gravitation and decides to undertake a research. But the person may settle down for something else depending upon the the interest of the supervisor in that institute or because there are certain instruments or apparatus which may be required to conduct those experiments which is not possible because that is not there. So, you have to reformulate your research problem. So, it is local conditions which has a strong bearing on the research process. So, scientific research according to Karin Nasatina is not in many cases not an outgrowth of scientific rationality is not what uh, is written in the textbook that this is how you are supp supposed to do research. Actual research does not take place that way which is which we are going to discuss in the due course of this lecture uh, through under different headings. First uh, sub, uh, sub theme of this is opportunism of research. She says that when we look at scientists, we can always compare them with the, uh, the tinkerers. Who are the tinkerers? Tinkerers are those who through a method of trial and error, they arrive at, at, sub at some solution. They have 
in most cases no tools or technology or machine to work with. Mostly they manage with whatever that is available. They try to use whatever they can find around them to produce workable object. Whatever they can lay, up, uh, lay their hands on, they will grab it and, make, and they try to solve a problem that they are involved in, the tinkerers. In contrast to that, in contrast to the engineers or the scientists, tinkerers always manage with odds and ends. So, the final product of tinkerers, it does not represent a perfect product of engineering, but a patchwork of odd sets pieced together when and where opportunity arose. That is, they are very much aware of the opportunities and they always try to make use of such opportunities or advantages. If they find a small tool, small object which they can use to, to do something on the project that they are working on, they will do that. Because ultimate aim is to find a workable solution to the project they are doing. It can all, the tinkerer can be tinkering with, tampering with or are given the task of repairing a radio, a transistor or a television. Uh, so, in the process, they will just use through and they may not have the basic knowledge of how to, uh, 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 how the radio works, how television works, but with trial and error, with whatever object that is available around them, they will try to make the radio work, they will try to uh, make the television work. That is how tinkerers go about the task. Why we talk about tinkerers? Because Nurse Satina says that scientists can be compared to the tinkerers. This does not mean that the scientists are irrational, unsystematic or career oriented. They display opportunism. Here opportunism implies indexicality of mode of production from the point of view of occasioned character of the product of research. That is, while working on your research program, research project, as the occasion demands, you may have to reformulate your the research strategy. You may have to add or subtract a research step, a methodological procedure. You may have to make use of certain material in place of the material that you originally intended to use. So, occasion character of product of research decides the mode of production within scientific world. Opportunism for him is not an individual characteristic. When we say scientists display opportunism, it does not mean that it is the individual characteristics of the scientist. For him, for her, that is for Karina or Satina, it is the process of scientific research. And this is true of opportunism as a characteristic is true of the scientific community in general. It is not a specific feature of any particular scientist. Now, how does this occasion character of research manifest itself? How the occasion or situation presents itself in such a way the scientist reformulate their research design? Let us take the example of a role played by local resources and facilities.
Now, what is the role of local resources in determining, modifying the research problem, research methodology? She gives a very fine example of a well equipped state of art laboratory. Mostly the laboratories that she was referring to in her research in her field work are biochemical laboratories. Now, this is a well equipped, it has all the apparatus, uh, has all the state of art latest technology and, and instruments. It has highly experienced staff, the laboratory staff is highly experienced, has been working for a long time. So, the person knew each and every aspect of, of, of the research that was undergoing there and the person is also very clever, can manipulate the situation to the advantage of the scientists who are undertaking the research there. The person is very reliable, can be relied upon for <coughs> any, any important uh, research process that is to be handled by him. Hence, such a lab with experienced uh, uh, lab hands as well as state of art instruments available was eagerly sought after by the scientists who were working in that institute. They all wanted to work, do their research in that laboratory. They all modified, reframed their research problem in such a way that they will get an opportunity to work in that lab. And this is the lab where protein could be generated, modified and tested in large volumes. So, that was an big advantage for the, for, the, uh, for the biochemical scientists because they could make use of this lab to do their protein research and we, we have a very well equipped lab with, with, with experienced lab hand. So, they would reformulate their research problem, they will add a strategy, add a methodological step so that to their research so that they can undertake the research in that laboratory. Research problems were invented so that that can be undertaken in that particular lab. For instance, she says another example of such kind of negotiation and manipulation that, uh, that happens at the local level within scientific community is that of, uh, let us say example of newly purchased electron microscope utilizing laser beams. It also held similar attraction. What is attractive about this electron microscope? It is newly purchased. A newly purchased one is a fresh electron microscope. That means it will give correct reading. That means uh, unlike the previous electron microscope which has some defect and you may not uh, uh, get the correct reading, but you are assured that this particular microscope which has been purchased recently, the latest one would definitely be better than the previous one technologically and also it would also give you correct reading. Hence, the scientist wanted to use those that particular microscope in that particular lab. That particular microscope was eagerly sought after. Now, having said that you have a state of art lab laboratory with uh, uh, highly experienced staff who are clever and reliable, holds lot of attraction for the scientist working in that particular institute or a newly purchased electron microscope uh, is eagerly sought after by the scientist. It also implies that the certain people who are owning these resources, the certain people who are in charge of those laboratories, certain people who are in charge, uh, who are in charge of this uh, electron microscope go to great lengths to protect it, to establish their ownership on it, so that only few people can use it. So, if you have ownership of this particular lab, if you are in charge of the particular lab, you are the uh, uh, <coughs> scientific officer who controls the laboratory facility, which is a well equipped one, you make sure that only you and your friends 
your colleagues with whom you have good terms, they get an access to it. You deny the access to just about every scientist who wants to make use of it. So, it brings in the power dimension in the scientific research, which is social, one of the social dimensions working at the micro level of this uh, micro level at uh, any research site. Opportunism and particular interest also sustain each other. For instance, a paper produced which analyzed the functional properties of protein based almost exclusively on chemical determinations supplied by institute's service lab. That is, one person conducted an experiment making use of the chemical determination, chemical uh, available in the service lab of the institute. And this paper looked at the functional properties of protein. When interviewed, that scientist said, if I had my way, if I would have done the research myself in my own lab, I would have preferred another method, I would have made use of other chemicals. This is an example of again scientists having to reformulate their research methodology in order to suit the local condition. The local condition in the local conditions uh, only this particular chemicals are available and you are working in that uh, uh, research institute, you have only you have access to that particular service lab where you can do the experiment. So, you have to make use of the whatever chemical instrument that is available. This is how the local conditions, local situation determines the process of scientific research production, the process of knowledge production within scientific community. Preference is also given to technical uh, instruments and apparatus which scientists have access to or within grasp. I have, I work in a IIT and I have spoken to many faculty members who are from engineering and sciences. They also say that many a times the students are told to work on a project because there are certain instruments which are already available in the department in that particular lab. There are certain uh, uh, machines which are lying there which had come uh, because of some previous research project because through funding from previous research project what is that is lying. So, let us make use of this machine, this gadget, this instrument. So, they invent a research problem that can make it, that can be done making use of those instruments. So, technical instruments and apparatus available at the service lab or at any laboratory anywhere in the world can also be a source of choice and selection of scientific research problems. Projects are also taken up to leverage equipments and certain measurements are taken because machines were here. I shall give a very uh, brief example of how resources and facilities available are also negotiated and manipulated. Equipments are sometimes misused. The equipments are misused because uh, a particular equipment is necessary, needed, but it is not there. So, make use of another equipment, make slight changes in that equipment, so that you can go ahead with your research. For instance, pressure meter is meant for something else, but in the research that was conducted by Karina Satina, she found that pressure meter, meter was used to determine the gas absorption capacity of a substance. Sometimes 
another example sometimes chemicals available in the stock are substituted uh, for unavailable ones so that the ongoing research do not get hampered people make use of certain chemicals which are easily available in the laboratory whereas they needed something else and the, the research is already undergoing the experiment is already uh, ongoing hence they do not want to hamper it they do not want to interrupt the process so they make use of another chemical which can substitute it technically so i shall give you few more examples as well as uh, i'll talk about some different aspects of scientist as an indexical reasoner in my next lecture thank you